thank you mr president my report on the private sector in development breaks new ground it provides a solution to the huge financial shortfalls in funding created by the development agenda of the next 15 years the success of the millennium development goals in the past 15 years have provided ample evidence of how to get it right in the next 15 years but 1 billion people still live on less than 1.25 dollars a day and more than 800 million people do not have enough food to eat poverty is not eliminated by handouts it is only wealth creation that ends poverty we have 15 years to fix that with the new 17 sustainable development goals that we have announced at the United Nations last year. But how can we fund this? Lofty ambitions to end poverty in all its forms everywhere come with a huge price tag. Vulnerable climate change mitigation alone will cost $250 billion. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development projects a funding gap, yes, I repeat, a funding gap of $2.5 trillion for the Sustainable Development Goals. A sum that is staggering, a sum that is beyond comprehension to our European taxpayer. A sum that the already struggling European taxpayer cannot even begin to shoulder. My report highlights that such a funding shortfall can only be adequately met by the private sector being involved in development, not through more taxes, but through partnership. But first, we have to end the tax fraud in developing countries which accounts for losses of nearly one trillion annually through illicit funding. Money that should stay in those countries are brought to Europe and other offshore accounts and hidden away by the elites of those countries. We have to make sure that those funds stay in those countries to be used for the development of those countries. Second, we have to demand that the OECD members match their 1970 pledge of 0.7% of GNI. Third, the Sustainable Development Goals will require the drive, the managerial skill and the commitment of our private sector partners because it is the private sector which creates 90% of the jobs and income for poor people in developing countries alongside donors, civil society and trade partners. Fourth, public-private partnerships must mobilize long-term, not short-term, long-term private finance and hold the private sector accountable to public sector tendering processes transparency and scrutiny. So this report calls for the private sector to invest in building and running schools, digging for wells and irrigating agriculture, building, running and maintaining hospitals and hospital services, building, owning, operating roads, airports, harbors, setting up meat, fruit and vegetable processing factories, all that will create jobs and wealth in the developing countries and done in partnership with the public sector and pump primed by EU development assistance. If we mean to offer the billion people still living in abject poverty the dignity of work and earning a living wage, then we must seize this opportunity before us now and get on with it. I, therefore, I commend this report to Parliament, and in doing so I want to thank my colleagues in the Development Committee from all the political groups who have assisted and supported me in this, and a particular thank you to Mrs. Ms. Ingrid Grosso, my research assistant, for doing all the hard work. Thank you so much.